Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. My name is Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video 16. We're in chapter three, uh, chapter four. This is part three. We're continuing on with uh, section 4.1. We're going to finish that up. We're talking about uh, scatter diagrams and, and correlation. So last time in, the, in this section, we've talked about what scatter diagrams are, which are plots, x, y plots, of points. Uh, we talked about what the correlation coefficient is. It's between negative 1 and positive 1. And the closer r is unitless, so it doesn't matter what the units of r, what the units x, what units x or y have, um, they cancel out. So everything uh, can be done without uh, manipulating units. And then as r, the absolute value of r approaches 1, that means r approaches negative 1 or r approaches 1, um, that the amount of variation uh, in the points around the line decrease. So we would see for a correlation of 1, every point's on the line. For, say, point 8, uh, there's not a lot of uh, variation. And then as we get closer to zero, this gets more and more variation around the line. Okay. If r is zero, uh, that doesn't mean that there's no association or not an association between x and y. It means there's no linear association. So I could have something that's actually the extreme case I went over, which was the, a very perfect parabola. And a straight line drawn through that would be a parallel. The slope would be 0, and r would be uh, 0 here. Okay. We went over the formula for r. Uh, it's a lovely, simple formula. I'm being sarcastic for most of you. Um, and it's uh, so n sum of x squared minus sum of x quantity squared. Uh, and then the same thing for y, sum of y squared minus sum of y quantity squared. And we are starting on how to determine if r is statistically significant. We started on that. We're going to actually uh, finish that. And we're continuing on in correlation. And the objective we're trying to do today, of course, is uh, perform a test to determine if r is statistically significant. OK, so let's take this example. Um, we want to test whether the correlation coefficient in the California wetland study of drainage sites is statistically significant at a 0.01 significance level. Uh, I need to tell you that means alpha equals 0.01. All right. Significance level is um, alpha. So alpha is, that's alpha. So recall that X was the um, phosphorus level in 100 milligrams per liter at the inlet of a biotreatment facility that was going to clean the water. And Y is the same measurement, but at the outlet, after they've cleaned the water and dump it back out into the environment. Okay. And this was from example two. And so recall that our correlation coefficient was 0 0.970, and we had eight pairs of data. So eight measurements, uh, the x from the inlet, the y from the outlet. We're going to let alpha equal 0.01, and of course n is 8, and we need to find the critical value in the table. And I should have had that open. I will go find it very quickly. Tables. And then I need the uh, this from the book. Okay. And... Now, I need, I said that I want alpha is 0.01, .01, and I want n is 8. So here's n is 8, and here's alpha is 0.01. So my critical value is going to be 0.83. So I, I look up that table value, and that's 0.83. Now, I need to check is the absolute value of r greater than the critical value. This is our, uh, if this is true, then r is statistically significant. Okay. 
and the absolute value of, of an already positive 0 0.970 is still 0 0.970. And you'll notice that I simply, let me clean this up a little bit, that I simply plugged in for the absolute value of R, that's 0 0.97, and then I plugged in the critical value that I got in the table. And in between is this greater than sign. And so I copied that down. And now I look to see if this statement here on the bottom, I have to clean it up so we can see it, is that true? And yes, this statement is true. 0.97 is bigger than 0.83. I could put a zero here to make them three decimal places. So this is true. So R is statistically significant. So now we need to write our conclusion, and I gave you a sentence that you need to use, and I've underlined where I put things in. So since it is significant, I put does exist. If it's not significant, I say does not. So there does exist sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relationship between the X value, and that's the inlet phosphorus level in 100 milligrams per liter. The units are important here. It's not 1 milligram per liter. It's 100. And the Y value here, the Y value is the outlet phosphorus level, again, in 100 milligrams per liter. They didn't have to be the same units, but they are. So you may want to specify that. In the population of, what population is this from? The California Wetlands Biotreatment Facilities would be the population where we randomly selected from those. Um, so... Let's read it again. There does exist sufficient evidence to conclude that a linear relationship between the inlet and outlet phosphorus levels in the population of California wetlands biotreatment facilities exist at a confidence level of 99%. Where did I get that? Well, alpha is 0.01. 1 minus alpha is 0.99, and that's the same thing as 99%, and this is my confidence level. Tested with a simple random sample, or you can use... SRS, of n equals 8. So doesn't that sound professional? Doesn't it make people, don't you think that whoever wrote this knows what they're talking about? It gives you confidence that what they're saying is true. So use a sentence like this and fill in the uh, blanks and uh, people will be impressed that you know statistics. All right. So, um, the correlation can be thought of as a measure of how well a linear model, and that's a straight line, fits the data points on a scatter uh, diagram. Again, the closer to negative one or positive one, the fit is better. And for values that are of R that are closer to zero, they have a poorer fit. So the closer to one, let's do a positive this time. The closer it is to one, Oops, not in the center of the data. The less variation or distance in the vertical direction that these points are from the line. The closer R is to zero, the more spread out those data points are from the line. Now, we have to be very careful when we're doing a correlation. Correlation does not mean causation. We cannot say that X causes Y. It may be true. It may not be true. And we're going to turn, uh, so why would it not be true? Well, number one, the scatter di diagram and the calculation of R are from a sample, not the whole population. Yes, we did a test, and we're, we're testing whether there's a relationship between the uh, sample and the population, but we can't really prove cause and effect this way. And then there's something called, this is lurking, L-U-R-K-I-N-G. So lurking variables. And then we have the range of the samples. So our sample, the range of our samples may not cover the entire population. And that's another issue. And we'll talk about that more in the next section. So a lurking variable. It's a variable that's not included as an explanatory variable or um, explanatory or response variable, either one. And it may be responsible for both for changes in X or changes in Y or changes in both X and Y. Okay? So it's not included in the study, but it may be, the, it may be causing an effect. So here's an example 
Over several years, the population of a certain town increased. During this time, someone noticed that the correlation between what we're going to call X, the number of people attending church, and Y, the number of people going to jail, was R equals positive 0 0.90. And it was statistically significant for five um, or more years uh, that this was uh, a sample that, okay, at alpha equals 0.05. But we can be very sure that going to church does not cause people to go to jail. There's a lurking variable, and that lurking variable is the population increase. So the increase in both of these was due to the increase in the overall population of town. So as more people come in, it's likely that those some of the a percentage of those will attend church and a percentage of those will end up in jail. So very, be very cautious. The correlation between two variables... Here's another thing. Okay, this is separate. So we're, we're moving on from this. Some people are tempted to use averages when they're doing a correlation. Don't do that. That is bad. It's misleading. It's wrong. You, you will not have good results. You will have better results than you should have. Okay? So the correlation between two variables using... Um, averages is usually higher than it is for the raw data. So do not use averages when you do correlation. It will falsely inflate R, and that is misleading and basically unethical. So please don't do that. Okay, I hope I've made that point. All right, so that's it for this uh, section. Remember to scan your uh, lecture notes before midnight on the date that's listed on the course calendar. Make these notes neat for you because you're the one that's going to use them for the test and uh, for homework. Update your formula sheet. Uh, I'm not sure if we did much to update your formula sheet today, but um, make sure it's up to date. And again, remember you can have the symbols, uh, the definitions of symbols on the formula sheet. If you have questions, come to my virtual office hours. Uh, if you don't have the ability to do that, email me. Make sure you email me a copy of your work and the problem so that I can help you quickly and know what's going on and, and help you better. We will see you next time.